In this video, we reveal the labyrinth of deceit that shrouded Hudson's true identity. His PR manager, who had him wrapped around their finger, crafted a picture-perfect persona, but nobody knew who the real Rock Hudson is. Was Hudson's real self lost in the strings of manipulation? You'll discover the disturbing truth at the end of this video. How Rock Hudson Covered His Homosexuality With Anorexia Imagine a guy like Rock Hudson. Strong chest, square jaw, soft-spoken. Movie heartthrob material, right? Add in sporty hair, smooth dance moves and killer flirting skills. He had it all. Women fell for his role as the ultimate bachelor and the prince charming of his time. But underneath that suave exterior, there were secrets that shocked everyone when his true feelings came out. And as if that wasn't enough, his early HIV secret caused huge legal battles among his lovers, even after he was gone. He had this whole dual personality thing going on. On one hand, he was Mr. Conservative, who'd rather die than be openly homosexual, and on the other, he was a total ladies' man. The man Rock Hudson is a classic example of an unconventional man with an ambition best suited for a conventional living. He unfortunately found himself in the highly biased American society of the 1950s through to the 1960s. I guess he must have told himself there must be a way around this shortcoming. Forget all the talk you've heard about this good-looking guy, Rock Hudson. He tried hard to win people over and did a great job until fate stepped in but he paid a heavy price for his choices and actions. This man was the perfect epitome of Hollywood's romantic leading man of his time. His handsome and clean-cut looks made everyone swoon, especially the ladies and those who were close to him and knew his inner struggles. I totally feel for Hudson. Imagine being a hidden queer actor, yet he pulled off being a big-time matinee idol. Who could have guessed he had these secret rendezvous with Cleopatra herself, Elizabeth Taylor, Lauren Bacall, Gina Lola Brigida, Doris Day and more. It's like a Hollywood undercover story. You can't mention celebrated films like Giant and Pillow Talk without reverence to the man who made the show a reality. Rock Hudson, of course. That's the screen version of this talented icon because his off-screen edition is the most interesting version. His crafty agent, Henry Wilson, was behind his screen version. He perfectly fabricated and projected to the women the ideal Prince Charming they should dream of before going to sleep at night. Who are we to question creativity or the man who created it? If you're thinking, wow, it sounds interesting, then think again, because the real hot topic is just ahead. We've also got a secret sauce simmering at the end that you won't want to miss. Now, I know you might have an image of Rock Hudson, that classic Hollywood heartthrob we all remember, but let me tell you, after watching this video, your perspective is about to do a complete 180. This isn't your average story. It's the untold tale of the real Rock Hudson, a side known only to a very select few. So keep those eyes glued, because we're diving into the lawsuit saga, the twists, and yes, even the fear of a simple kiss. Let's unveil the side of Rock Hudson you never knew existed. He and his PR team also showed the real Hudson, what I like to call the non-acting Hudson, as this handsome symbol of masculinity and heterosexuality. It was not an easy road for Rock Hudson, living as an A-list hunk. He worked so hard with lots of anguish to be able to pull through. I can't help but wonder how he felt during his iconic pairings with Doris Day, with their cute nicknames like Eunice Blotter and Ernie. Another great screen deception was noticeable in Douglas Sirk's classic melodramas, all which ensured that handsome Hudson became a symbol of manhood at a time when such symbolism was extremely limited. Did they say his agent groomed him and gave him manners? Henry Wilson was in full control of Hudson's life during his journey to greatness, much credit to the Wilson's gig. He had a knack for attracting and charming young movie hopefuls, often giving them fake names for the same reason. He already did the same and had acclaimed success in heartthrobs like Guy Madison, Rory Calhoun, Troy Donahue, and Tab Hunter. Henry Wilson would tutor these guys, groom them, and give them manners. 
Even before stepping into Hollywood, Hudson understood that he needed to refine his personality, like editing a draft to succeed in the industry. On the big screen, he owned the golden age of Hollywood as the ultimate heartthrob, playing straight roles. Like many, I still think that the huge deception in the life of Hudson fueled the rumour that he was a homosexual more than his passes with many boys. As the sexuality rumour, however, gathered momentum, his handlers, again, put on their thinking cap. This time, the only solution was to arrange a marriage for him. That was it. Hudson's quick marriage to his secretary, Phyllis Gates, was an attempt to hush his name from the newspapers, especially about the gossip that linked him to a homosexuality scandal at the time. He also spent his entire life living the edited life and covering up the scandalous secret, but destiny was waiting for him. At the appropriate time, he had no choice but to tragically reveal to millions of fans who the real Hudson is. The nemesis was even faster for Hudson and his handlers as he became a victim of AIDS, one of the most famous victims in that regard. But before the public came to know about it, lots of things played in the background. I heard that at a fancy White House party in 1984 with the First Lady Nancy Reagan, Hudson looked really thin. She noticed it and advised him to see a doctor for a health check. One day Hudson noticed an odd spot on his neck and decided to see a skin doctor. Little did he know that this visit would change his life forever. I can imagine Rock's face when he heard that what he had wasn't a usual skin problem, but a cancerous legion called Kaposi's sarcoma. The doctor who checked Hudson's neck later shared with him that he had something like AIDS. It was a new virus that was causing problems among the queer community, and not well known yet. Terrified by the prognosis that he would soon die, an overwhelmed Hudson went into a state of denial and continued appearing in movies. Over the coming months he gave himself time to come to terms with the diagnosis. At that time Hudson worked on the TV show The Vegas Strip War and continued to be a true gentleman, even mentoring much younger stars like Sharon Stone. But not too long after he started losing weight and looking very sick. Hudson was telling all those who cared to listen that he was suffering from anorexia. Many of those seeking an answer would not even know exactly what AIDS meant in the era. He kept his condition secret for one obvious reason. He felt exposing his diagnosis would give him out as a queer man. As such would rubbish his age-long edited image of a perfect heterosexual. So with Hudson's secret diagnosis, he took on his last acting gig and he put his heart into it. He played Linda Evans' love interest on Dynasty, you know, that big show. He got a shocker when he realised he had to smooch Linda on screen. He refused. I know it's hard to believe, but those studio bigwigs had no idea about Hudson's condition. They were seriously annoyed when he turned down a little kiss with Linda. Linda said, It was incredibly touching how hard he tried to protect me. No matter how, directors and producers pressed, he refused to put me at risk. One thing was certain about his condition, whether he opened up or not, he still had an incredible situation facing him, and it was an urgent one. While Hudson was totally in denial, he secretly wrote some weird and distressing letters to four different men. He anonymously informed them of his illness, saying something like, We recently slept together. Go to your doctor and have a check-up. Sadly, at least one of them, a 22-year-old man, realised he also had the disease. He was now pale and gaunt and still had not opened up to his friends or the public, but was secretly itinerant to France to find a solution with experimental treatments one after another. All effort was leading nowhere and death was closing in on him. One fateful day we heard that Hudson collapsed in a Paris hotel. Though his promoter told the public he had liver cancer, even as suspicion grew among friends. After he came to his old co-star Doris Day's TV show, Day, who was among Hudson's best friends, took a closer look at him and nearly cried for his condition. Sometime in 1985, a critically ill Hudson was in Paris receiving treatment. The press was available to hear what Hudson had to say. He bravely told the truth in a crowded press briefing. The hide-and-seek was over, as Hudson's publicist told the public that he had AIDS. 
critics say he instantly became the most famous person to ever agree that he or she had AIDS because of the stigma attached to the virus. Another school of thought analysed it as a technical acknowledgement that he was homosexual. After Hudson passed away, his ex-lover Mark Christian was furious. He actually sued Hudson's estate, claiming intentional infliction of emotional distress. Christian sued that Hudson continued to have sex with him even after he knew he was an HIV patient. Christian was shocked to hear about the actor's HIV status and was understandably terrified that he may have acquired the virus. Christian did not test positive, but those in the know said he won his case. Christian was, however, not the only ex-lover who was astounded by being kept in the dark. Hudson's long-lost love, Lee Garlington, was heartbroken when he found out. Hudson's publicist even prevented him from meeting Hudson before he passed away. Apart from Hudson's feud with James Dean, he was seen as an actor with one of the greatest gifts for friendship. Appearing on set, Hudson was known as an ideal professional treated the lowest-level gaffer or script girl with respect, as reported. This is a personality trait that of course you rarely see in most of the big stars. Sure, he had a fake name and fake ID, but others do the same. His fake relationship was only so he could advance his career and bolster public interest in his movies, particularly to shut down gossip about his scandalous personal life. He had his family, his professional life, had his private life, and he had to portray a different person in each of those realms. Alice Weyer, his adopted sister, had declared, Hudson was a man who lived his life trying to please everyone but himself. On how people view Hudson's career, he was nothing but a great performer on and off the camera. He was someone you could confide in, from his dealings with Elaine Stritch to that of Tyrone Power, not forgetting Carol Burnett. If it wasn't Marilyn Monroe crying on his shoulder, then it was Judy Garland, his secretary Lois Rupert reported. As you already know, Rock Hudson is a borrowed name because he was born Roy Harold Shearer Jr. in 1925. Somewhere in Winnetka, Illinois, senior Roy, his father, and Catherine, his mother, were both diligent working-class fellows. They earned their living working on their family farm. Little Roy Hudson grew up watching his grandparents plough their farm. He learned his survival instinct. When his dad left his family, Hudson and his mum had to rely on each other to make it through. She was mother, father and big sister to me, Hudson would later recall, and I was son and brother to her. Life was not easy, even as his mother remarried. He and his mother would get an ultimate punishment from the man who was supposed to be kind to them. This harsh reality pushed young and handsome Roy into taking solace in the movie theatre, where he later became a screen hero himself. No one knew, not even Hudson could say in that small town where he was being raised, that he could comfortably become a Hollywood sensation. And when he tried to venture into acting, all he heard from those who cared for his well-being was, You don't bother with that. You ought to be a policeman or a fireman. Well, young Roy had his idea, so... I never said anything, I just kept my mouth shut. He had a feasible, unstarry Illinois upbringing, sang in the Glee Club but with no notable talent. I was really excited when I learned that he worked as a car mechanic during World War II, then he moved to Hollywood where his amazing fame was waiting for him. Back then, Hudson was incredibly determined and looked exactly like you'd imagine, a man willing to do whatever it took to earn a living. Funnily enough, some say he was more like a Ken doll with a dye job. He had the epic good looks, the usual soft and tempting smile, but for the dramatic acting, more work was needed for him to become marketable. All that was taken into cognizance by the sharp eye of Henry Wilson, who quickly renamed him Rock Hudson and began a series of finagle in him. It all began with a small role in the war movie Fighter Squadron. The Hudson we know today reportedly needed around 38 takes just to nail a single line in that movie. Wilson realised that Hudson needed more than just talent to become a star, and that's exactly what he provided. For the next 18 years, Hudson followed Wilson's guidance, transforming from a minor actor to a top-tier Hollywood heartthrob. Most fans agreed Hudson's freedom was long overdue when he broke up with Wilson in 1966. 
but Hudson had his reasons different from what people were thinking. He probably was pressured by his lovers before this time, among whom was Hudson's boyfriend Lee Garlington. In 1961, three years after Hudson and his wife Phyllis separated, he met the young aspiring actor at Universal Studios. Their clearly open relationship lasted until 1965, even continuing sporadically into the early 1970s. Garlington later recalled telling him, Why don't you fire him? referring to Wilson, to which Hudson replied, I can't fire him because he threatened to have one of his boys throw acid in my face if I ever fired him, and I knew he would do it. And remember that secret sauce I mentioned? Now you can really get behind the scenes. It turns out there's a whole secret side to him that only a handful of his close homosexual L.A. pals and lovers knew about. They finally opened up, some for the very first time. There's this whole underground network of friends who'd hook him up with willing young guys for his personal enjoyment, behind closed doors, a full-on Lothario living a wild romantic life. In his private moments, naked pool parties were a thing too. Armistead Maupin, the author of Tales of the City, thought he was the last man in California to end up in bed with Rock Hudson, until he finally did. Those close friends shared why Hudson was never really into forming long-lasting relationships with a man. It turns out he was way too caught up in maintaining that picture-perfect facade of his other life. Hudson was out whining and dining women in public, all the while secretly sneaking off for late-night rendezvous after a few drinks. This guy was living a double life that even the best of us couldn't imagine. It seems Hudson even tried to flirt with his male co-stars. During the filming of Giant in 1955, he had a falling out with his co-star James Dean. I didn't really like him personally, Hudson admitted later. Dean found it hypocritical that Rock was keeping up this straight image in public while privately making advances towards Dean. Some might say that's a case of the pot calling the kettle black. It's pretty well known that early in his career, James Dean was supported by a homosexual radio executive. If you're talking about hidden sexuality, they weren't all that different. Hudson often went on vacations with his boyfriend, Lee Garlington, in the US or Mexico. Hudson considered his one true love according to a biography. In those days when being a homosexual was against the law and Hudson was recognisable, their relationship was quite complex. Garlington recalled how they used to sneak around, often with him going into motels solo and booking a room. Hudson waited discreetly outside and joined in later. In a New Orleans bar, the pair almost slipped up when they broke Agent Henry Wilson's rule. It was about never being photographed together to avoid outing their relationship. They managed to save the day by purchasing the photo and negative from the photographer. Hudson Garlington and their close circle of friends avoided public restaurants in LA, choosing instead to gather at Hudson's stunning Hacienda-style home in Beverly Hills, which they affectionately called The Castle. They frequently headed to Laguna Beach where, as Hudson's friend Ken Gilson described, the scene at the boys' beach was very erotic. Former activist Ken Maley also recalled accompanying an excited Hudson to a secret club in San Francisco named Glory Holes. In this club, patrons could engage in intimate activities through gaps in the wall of adjoining booths. We watched Rock walk around and go in a booth, and you could hear this scream, Oh my God, it's Rock Hudson! Maley reminisced. It obviously didn't bother him because we stayed. We stayed quite a while. Joe Carberry, a former hospital laboratory boss, was another of Hudson's close friends and lovers. Didn't mince words about the actor's sexual interests either. He had boyfriends. They were mostly young and attractive and well endowed, he candidly shared. There is even recording of a conversation between Hudson and a friend who helped him find casual sexual partners. The friend described a damn fun boy who worked at Paramount Studios, stood at six foot two and was into working out. How did they arrange those private rendezvous with those men? Curious, Hudson inquired, how's the equipment? His friend responded, about nine inches, I guess, and he's pretty skilled in that department too. Hudson arranged for the guy to call him. Hudson also leaned on another well-connected friend, an optometrist named Wes Whedon, 
who would gather a group of good-looking muscular guys for spontaneous pool parties. These events were a chance to meet Hudson, and clothing was optional. Can you believe how Rock Hudson, the master of privacy, actually managed to pull off those secret dates with his boyfriends? This kind of insight is like finding a rare gem, and we're thrilled to be sharing it with you. I bet your perception of Rock Hudson has taken a little detour after watching this video. He became one of the first celebrities to openly share his HIV-AIDS diagnosis, reshaping how the world approached the epidemic. This was a turning point that left a lasting impact still felt today. Remember, Rock Hudson's influence goes way beyond the movies he starred in. None of us are 100% sure where his head was at that moment, how aware or how complicit he was in the revelation, or how in control of the narrative he was. But we do know that it had a massive impact on the way people talked about HIV and AIDS. People who were close to him said... He added that he hopes his film reminds audiences, especially younger generations, of the horrific early years of the epidemic and the slow response of the Reagan administration until Hudson elevated discussion of the illness to the mainstream. It's a legacy worth remembering and understanding. We can't be certain about what was going through Rock Hudson's mind at that very moment, how much he knew or was part of that revelation, or how much control he had over the whole situation. Before we wrap things up, here's a question to think about. Imagine you were in Rock Hudson's shoes, given all we've discussed in this video. What choices would you have made? It's a chance to step into history and reflect on how we navigate challenges. Share your thoughts in the comments below. But Rock Hudson's story is just the tip of the iceberg. Ever heard of Alec Guinness? Yeah, the iconic actor had his own struggles too, where diving deep into his life and the internal battles he fought because of his sexuality. In this video, you will get to know everything. Click now.